What's up, y'all? All right, so about a week and a half ago, we did a video on rim cylinders and Jimmy proof locks and rim mounted locks. And in that video, I showed y'all a Taylor brand plastic core, plastic cylinder, not the whole cylinder in plastic, it's just the core. Uh, rim lock and I wanted to talk about this guy a little bit more in depth because there's a couple of little surprising things about it now I'm gonna post the video up here in the corner so if you have missed that video be sure and go watch it if you want more information on rim mount locks but in the video a few of you mentioned that y'all had seen these a lot on garage doors and that is almost always where I've run across them as well who knows who knows why Taylor decided to make a plastic core like this now we all remember the whole aluminum key era and that was because during wartime efforts like world war one world war two copper or brass was always like really hard to get so a lot of lock manufacturers were trying to come up with ways to reduce brass use this may have fallen during one of those periods but who's to say why or how that still came into being and it's just, just still kind of odd not many people ever made like a plastic cylinder lock but i'm going to show you real quick in case you haven't missed that and you need to catch up on rim locks themselves rim locks go on the inside of most doors just like this just like that just sits on it there's a hole drilled in it where that lock goes through the door just like this hold it up to it so it goes through the door just like that yep this sticks through the door and engages in this little part of whatever rim lock is being used at the time. So in this case, uh, again, on a garage door, you would often find these vertically like this. And there's usually some type of either like a disc or something with a cutout in it that basically is allowed to turn when this is retracted like this. It just, it's allowed to turn connected to a handle on the outside. So when you turn the handle, the disc is allowed to turn back and forth. The disc has a rod which is attached to it and a spring. So it's kind of a spring loaded disc and the rod goes into the track of the door to keep it from going up or down. So when this is in the projected position, the cutout on that disc catches right there. So when you turn the key, it retracts this just like this from the outside if we were turning the key. Turn the key just a little bit and it causes that disc to let go and then you can turn the handle and withdraw the latch. So one interesting thing about these is uh, some of these variations had a hold back feature, right? So that's why you were inside, say you wanted to raise and lower the garage without locking it, you could hold it back by turning it that way and that way it's just freely, you know, turning. Interesting thing about that though is on the outside, no matter which way you turn the key, it, uh, it doesn't hold back. So the hold back is only active with the thumb turn part on the inside of the door. But anyway, that is not about that. If you want to watch, uh, if you want to learn more about Jimmy Proof and rum locks and all that, I'll go ahead and post the video link up here. But today we're going to look at this plastic core uh, crap metal body. One big difference before I forget about it is the plate that holds this on the inside of the door uh, is almost pretty much standard for all rim cylinders. See how those holes, see how those holes line up perfectly? And then we just go and we'll say get this other, this Ilco brand. See how that, that lines up pretty much perfectly. This was one of those one-off things where if you hold these two up side by side, you can see a whole different footprint so that was a big thing if you have to switch these out you do have to use a different plate because the holes are are definitely wonky on those compared to pretty much any other brand uh, but let's take it apart we're more interested in what and how this is made so let's go over to the workbench okay hey, so before you get to going hey taylor made I can't believe this company made plastic core locks. Well, Taylor was a huge company back then. They made keys, uh, just it, just all kind of stuff. They made all kind of locks, all kind of keys, not just these. The Taylor cylinders were typically this 1141 GE key or the T7. 
it's pretty identifiable from all other keys because it has this really thin double layer of uh, double groove on one side and it's kind of a thin key for sure and uh, as you can see this works doesn't work this lock but it goes in perfectly fine uh, but taylor did have a whole range of other kinds of locks we'll take a look at this brass mortise cylinder we'll look at some of the labeling here this one's number 609 brass mortise cylinder taylor philadelphia pennsylvania five pin cylinder that's right has a nice little graphic on it these were actually really decent locks it's very heavy you know it's definitely solid brass one thing to note though these keys that come with it are also the 111 GE is what Taylor called their number, which is the same thing as the T7. But one thing interesting about these keys that came with this compared to the ones that came with the other one, if we hold this up, uh, now when you're cutting the keys, there's three cards in the 1200 deck. If you're using a 1200 to originate keys for these, you would use the large pin Taylor. And you can see here holding up with the shoulder, you can see all the cuts are the same but look how much longer this tip is right here it's got a really extended tip and if we tried to use these original Taylor keys with that lock look at that it won't go all the way in because it's uh, so I don't know if this came before that and then they ended up having to like change all the keys to make them work with a shorter I don't I don't know but you can see it works fine in this cylinder that's probably an old, I was probably using an old Yale uh, mortise lock more than likely. What's that say? What does that say? Hong Kong. Look at that. Made in Hong Kong. But uh, nice cylinder. Nice finish on them. Taylor was kind of on top of it with their uh, machining. If we took this guy apart, it's probably got pretty tight tolerances for what it is. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this guy. Now, plastic why plastic nobody knows maybe the theory about you know I, I think two things maybe maybe there was maybe it was when they came out with these maybe there was like a brass shortage or maybe it was just them thinking hey we're gonna use, we're gonna market this as a garage door lock uh but the bad thing about it is is when a key cylinder when a metal to metal metal core all right you can see this corrosion for instance on this bald one uh, or schley lock right here so this can get corroded but the good thing about that even when it's in a corroded state if you can get all the pins out you can you can hit it and whack it and get it out and clean it up not so much with the plastic one every one of these that i have run up on uh have both a yes been on garage doors and b been what I call corrosion welded. What happens when you corrode plastic to cheap metal is instead of it just getting a rough layer of corrosion, like it, it almost like melts the plastic into the metal itself and makes it absolutely inoperable. So I don't know, like I said, when they came up, whatever engineer came up with this design, I don't know if they thought it was a good thing for outdoor use and they, you know, got applauded like, oh, hey, you know, you made it cheaper and you made it more weather resistant. But that is totally not the case because I've never run across one of these that was pretty much in any condition to be able to rekey simply because of how weld corroded it. That's what I call it. Weld, weld, weld corroded it was. So almost always you do have to replace it with another lock. However, however, sometimes that's not as easily said and done because a lot of times on thin metal garage doors, you'd find people that took and cut just enough away to make this go in. So in other words, instead of a hole that a regular rim cylinder, solid volley, this is a mortise, but if it was a rim, uh, you would not be able to just easily slip this in where this was because somebody used like a half inch drill bit in three places just to make this work and you end up having to recut that metal out it can get actually can get a little irritating to have to do that 
Uh, so it's sometimes it's not as easy as one, two, three, just slapping in a new cylinder. Also, don't forget your 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 plate on the inside would have to be replaced as well. But this comes with most rim locks. So anyway, we got it turned here. Let's go ahead and pull this clip off, and I will start showing you a couple of the ooh, interesting parts of this lock. Number one is the clip itself. We're going to go ahead and take that off. If we see this clip, this is not something that you're going to find in every parts bin. That is not broken or anything. That is literally how the clip is made. So if you do run across one of these that you think is good enough to be able to rekey, then uh, definitely don't lose your clip on it. And we can see something going on funny right there. I'm going to show you that. Uh, this is not exactly a half inch diameter. It's like a little bit less. So uh, some half inch. This is a half inch brass. That won't go through very well. But if we took this one, it goes through just fine. So yes, a half inch or the .495 plug follower is what you want there. So we got that out. Let's go ahead and zoom in the camera because now we are getting to the really interesting part of this guy. And the really interesting part of that being it is indeed a two-piece, a two-piece core. Look at that. Not even molded completely out of one piece. It is two pieces that snap together with your pen grooves in it, with your little grooves for the T7 key. That's right. It's even, it's even got those two little grooves right there, look at that. Very interesting uh, design for sure. Uh, and also a design that makes it almost impossible to impression because if you put any, any little bit of force on this guy, uh, yeah, you break that in half. It would it would split right here and it wouldn't hold together. In fact, a lot of them that I run across in the field actually do have a split already in the plug just from, you know, the years of use. Almost always when you do run across them nowadays, they have not been used in forever, so they're corrosion welded together. But if you do happen to run across a pristine condition one, almost always you will see the crack right there where it just split apart but that's it that's an interesting little plug right there y'all but even more interesting than that well i don't know if it's more interesting but it is interesting nonetheless we have these pins it's just these are all just standard regular pins there is no uh quote tailor spacing you know pen chart up here so you do have to kind of wing it when you are uh rekeying this you just kind of have to go through and test as you go but look at how these guys are designed look at that top pin chamber they all use standard top pins as with almost everything dead and wasn't really a concern so there wasn't really pick resistant things in a majority of locks back then but if we if we take all these out let's go ahead and dump the rest of them do, 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 do and peek down in there. It looks like corrugated, it's all one piece, right? So let's get this pick so I can. Uh, these really don't necessarily come out, so I'm not gonna try to force them out. They are kind of wiggly wobbly in there. So yeah, they wiggle wobble. So each piece is one, one piece bent. Like a little wave pattern almost. Look at that guy. Super weird, super weird for a lock to be made like that. And you know, for what it is, I guess that's just the cheapest way they could do it. I don't, I don't know. Post in the comments section if you have any idea of the history of these guys other than the fact that they were used you know, I'm saying, I'm guessing from either between the 40s and 60s or 40s and 70s or 50s and 70s, but yeah, interesting little guy for sure. Interesting little design with the split apart plug. So anyway, like I said, I just wanted to show this guy to you. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble all of this 
Uh, and I think I covered pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about with it. I really just want to show you all the split core and the funny upper chambers there. I would like to yank those out to show you a little bit closer, but honestly, they're just a little red wave bent way probably stamped out in a press and then shoved down in there you can see the ends of them right there so just pieces of metal that stamp formed into those u shapes two of them stuck in there uh anyway let me get this back together having those is actually a little bit ticky getting the uh getting the springs and top pins in because they're not exactly still in there but not too hard get on in there Doot. just like that make sure we're putting the top pins in yep And a spring looks like spring spring oh there it is there we go not too difficult to reassemble um i don't know how these pins run here i really don't think it matters so i'm just going to drop them in randomly just like that Yep, and then uh, follow it the rest of the way through, just like that, and click, click, put our double-ended tailpiece in there. As with all rim cylinders, it's designed to be cropped down, chopped down to length, depending on how thick the door is, just like that, and clip. All right, there we go. All back together. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, or if you are a longtime Smith and it back in the day, it was common for you to actually go out and replace these things or install them. Let us know in the comment section if you know the actual reason why they made on plastic. Probably, we're probably all going to theory as to, you know, brass, blah, 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 weather, blah, blah, blah. We don't know, but. Uh, just, uh, just weird locks. Not many, not many off the top of my head, uh, that we can say were made out of a, a plastic core. So, thanks for watching. Question or comments, post them in the comment section. We'll catch y'all next video. Hey. <laughs>